Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And now that I have the uh, double width, double weave blanket off the loom, um, I have turned my attention to some more simple projects, uh, specifically kind of exploring some plain weave projects. And one of them that I thought would be kind of fun to do on my rigid huddle loom is to use some of the leftover wool fiber from my blanket, which is hand spun, and use it to create some felted pot holders. Uh, so I had quite a bit of a couple of the colors left over. And then I also have all the thrums. Um, and the nice thing about the uh, felted pot holders is I can leave short ends sticking out um, the sides and once it is felted uh, those will just be cut off so I don't have to be too concerned about having some you know short uh, lengths of weft yarn um, so I decided to go ahead and use um, the green the red and one color that I didn't use in the blanket, but which um, I had a small sample skein of, is kind of a, a tan. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And we're just going to warp up some stripes in that and a plaid, and then weave the uh, plaid in a sim the weft portion of the plaid in the same dimensions as the uh, warp portion of the plaid. Um, and I thought the first thing that would be a good idea to do is show you how to direct warp a rigid huddle loom. Now I've shown a the process of direct warping using a uh, a shaft loom, a tab my table loom, but it is a little bit different with a rigid huddle loom. So we're going to go ahead and uh, work that up and I'll show you the entire process and then we will weave these and uh, throw them in the wash to felt and then cut them apart. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got the uh, rigid huddle loom set up here on my kitchen table and I've got a five dent reed in it and this is the back of the loom. And then I've got a warping peg set up on a little table and my tape measure here stretched out to the three yards back here at the back of my loom. So the three yards is how long I want my warp to be and uh, we'll just go ahead and start warping with these three colors that I picked. It's the red, the green, and that uh, tan that I told you about. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, measure from the center of my reed. So uh, the total width of the project is 12 and 2 fifths, so half of that is 6 and 1 fifth, which is right about there. Four uh, slots from the end. So I'll take the first color that I'm going to use, and I'm just going to tie a, a big looped knot in this so that I can get my scissors through the um, this loop right here um, just makes it easier when I'm cutting off and then we take the slaying hook or the threading hook and we put it through the slot and we grab a loop and then we walk that loop down the length of the that table here that I'm using and we loop it over that post at the other end. And then when we come back to this end, we're going to go over that ro rod again 
And because this particular project is uh, two threads held together, we're going to go through the same slot and we're going to walk that loop all the way back down and put it over the warping peg and then come back. Um, tilt you up and down, sorry about that. And then, so we've got two threads, two doubled threads through that one slot. Now we will go over to the next slot and pull the loop through and walk it down. and put it over the warping peg. Maybe if I just zoom you out a little bit. Oh, that's better. Yeah, eh, you can't see as detail, but that's fine. You get the idea. Um, so we'll do the same slot again. And we'll just walk that down, walk it back. And I'm keeping a little bit of tension on the warp thread as I walk it down. And I'm also keeping it from twisting. I'm always going uh, from the right hand side of the loop is the uh, secured part, let's say. And then the left hand side of the loop uh, going around the end of the peg is coming off the ball of yarn. Um, so we want to, we don't want to twist anything as we're going back and forth. And just keep two in each slot. So there's actually four threads in each slot. There's two loops of thread. And this first uh, section is um, 12 threads. So I want to do six slots. So it's 12 doubled threads. So I'm going to walk them back and forth um, 12 times but I'm only using six slots and I'll show you why uh, when we get these all threaded on here. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't twist it up. And you can see how every other uh, pass the thread goes um, either over or under the warp rod. And so you end up with, with a loop, you know, over the rod that is going to secure everything. So let's see here. I think maybe one more. You definitely get your steps in when you're doing this. <laughs> so walking three yards back and forth, back and forth. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to the next color. So I'm gonna kind of figure out where um, that green thread will hit the warping bar and I'll pull it through to the front and then I'm gonna take the uh, new color and I'm going to thread it through the same slot that um, the green color would have traveled through and then just, it, this just makes it a lot easier. T 
tie it in front of that heddle so that you're not trying to have tension on it and get it the right length and figure out where you need to tie it and tie an overhand knot. And then you can just pull it through then just toss the ball down on the ground or the floor and then you can move to the next slot and you're uh, now you're warping the new color oops my uh, that silly thing keeps falling down that's okay we will just put it back up there we go and I only need four threads of this which will be two slots And make sure we don't twist it and we'll just speed things up here because it takes a long time to do this so then just like with the green we will uh, pull the red through tie it all right so I skipped over a bit here so right here I ran out of green but I was able to make it all the way to the end of the peg so I tied it on at the end of the peg and then uh, brought it back so then when you get them all done just uh, tie a loop and uh, put it on the end now we're ready to wind the warp onto the back beam and we come down to the peg end and we're going to uh, keep these loops together until we wind it on so we're going to just pull these off so this is kind of all tensioned and easy to keep uh, secure and organized and we'll just uh, do a little braid here and so that we keep everything under tension we don't want any tangles I mean it's a short warp so um, it's not too bad So I'm just going to chain it up uh, until I get up to close to the front. And then we'll bring you back down to the loom part. And we can start winding on. And I'm going to just grab it and make sure everything is kind of under the same tension. I never get this paper straight ah it's my nemesis so we'll try and get it see if I can get it straightened out yeah all right just you know what that's not working okay we're just gonna cut it off and um, fold it over and get it straight on there because it's yeah I'm really bad at doing that I'm bad at doing that on my big loom too so uh, so just like your any other loom you're going to keep the tension uh, kind of do a, a yank and crank and try and keep the paper from going under there and then once we get to a certain point we're going to now uh, take and thread the one of the loops that we did from the slot we're going to thread them over into the holes so now this is the front of the loom I turned you around and I'm going to take the two looped threads that are in the first slot and normally you would cut this loop and take it and put it in um, an adjoining hole and that's how a rigid huddle loom works and you kind of want to make sure that you don't cross the threads too awfully bad 
and you can put it in either hole it just you can go to the left or to the right it doesn't really matter um, just be consistent obviously so but since we're doing doubled threads I am going to go ahead and pull one loop through uh, the adjoining hole and then we'll do the next one figure out which one we don't want to get them too crossed up and back of the heddle so i just kind of pass them by each other see which one passes by easier and then pick the one that works best so this is a little time consuming um, but it, it goes pretty fast. Okay, so I messed up here a little bit and I put one thread uh, or one loop through the slot instead of two. And this ended up giving me five uh, loops instead of the four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the thread that's in the middle slot there and I'm going to put that one in the hole. And then I'm going to take one of the threads that's in the slot and move it over to the slot. Um, now I've got my four threads over here. I have this extra one. I am just going to pull it out and toss it off the back. And now I'll have to move these all over appropriately. Uh, so we're just going to take uh, the next one out of that slot, move it into the hole, and then move that one over from that slot to the correct slot. So we'll have to do that with the rest of these and it will put our project off uh, a little bit to the right, uh, but it's not gonna make a significant difference. All right, so got them all threaded and now uh, I'm going to tie on to the front rod and I probably didn't leave myself enough length but we'll make it work. It's stretchy yarn. Um, so you, I'm using uh, six loops of thread, which is a little more than an inch because I'm doing five ends per inch. Um, so we'll just grab six. Oh, my, uh, the clamp came loose. Push that back. And that gives me um, three on each side. I put them over the rod, bring them up on either side, and then tie a uh, knot in it. And tighten that one up a little bit. And then we'll just go ahead and do this with the rest of them. And on these ones that had the four, uh, I decided to, instead of doing six per, I just did the four. Um, now we'll tighten everything up for the final time, tie the final knots. All right, so here we are ready to wind a double thread onto the shuttle. And what I've done is I've put it in a center pull ball and then I'm going to take a thread from the inside of the ball and the outside of the ball and hold them together and wind that onto my shuttle because we're doing double threads in both the warp and the weft. So I'm just going to take that little ball of yarn and wind my shuttle with that little ball and holding both threads together. And this will just keep kind of an even tension on them and then I end up with a shuttle that is double threaded. All right, 
right, so I started weaving some already. Um, and you can see that I have here, um, it didn't come out um, completely even, come across, so I need to splice this in. And we're going to handle the two threads just as the same way as if we were um, unraveling uh, plies from our yarn and putting two plies or one ply from the old yarn and one ply from the new yarn. We'll do that exactly the same, but we're using two threads instead of two plies. So think of it as having a four ply yarn now. Um, I'm going to split those plies. So we'll push the new one through there and pull the end to where they kind of line up and figure out which one I need to put in and which one I need to keep out. Right, that one should go back down in the shed and then that one's out and then one of these plies can come up out of the shed about there. All right, perfect. Now we'll go ahead and beat that in and cut off the tails. And just like magic, the splice disappears. And especially it will disappear when it's felted. You're never going to be able to see that. So this one, this particular color, I'm going to do uh, 30 picks of. It goes pretty fast, um, even if I'm not speeding up. And you'll notice when I put a new yarn in, um, I just leave the tail sticking out. Okay, so you can see that I have woven the entire piece. And um, I wanted to show you, because I didn't demonstrate this really in the uh, weaving portion of the video. So here is where I use the thrums. And I had a piece that was not long enough to go all the way across, so I just let it hang out on the side. And I'll trim these up. And uh, then this is the beginning of each one, and I'll trim those up a little bit. Um, we won't trim them real short so that they don't have a chance to sneak back into the warp before it's felted. Um, we'll take this and we will throw it in the laundry with hot water and uh, some towels and a load of towels and then it will lots of agitation we might run it through the wash two or three times uh, and so that it gets really felted so this is 12 and 2 fifths um, inches wide and um, i don't know how many repeats we got out of it let's let's see so we got one two three four five, six, seven, eight. So I got eight repeats out of it, uh, which is great. Um, I put on three yards. Um, it will shrink a lot. So let's go ahead and throw it in the washing machine. Okay, so we have our uh, hot pads out of the wash and they've been dried and you can see this felted really nicely. Um, it only took one 
uh, one cycle through the washing machine. Uh, I put it on um, low water and uh, hot water, put some towels in with it and probably way too much soap and let it run for about 15 minutes. And I checked it every five minutes or so, uh, but I let it run a full cycle and then I rinsed it in cold water. And two things that will felt wool is um, hot water and agitation, and then shocking from hot water to cold water. Now what we need to do is to cut apart uh, the individual hot pads. And so it goes from this green to half of this green. And there's more here because I put in extra for a weft protector. Uh, but let's go ahead and see how wide this is. So this is um, three and three eighths, which doesn't divide quite equally, which is annoying, but we will uh, work with it. So let's say it is uh, one and a half, one and five eighths and I'll split the five eighths so we're going to say one and there's one and a half one and five eighths and so it's going to be one and nine sixteenths um, as close as I can do that. So right about there. So now this, you, you're really going to have to push to get through the layers. That leaves a nice clean cut. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, so now we're going to do that with the other end. One and nine sixteenths. And this does not have to be absolutely perfect. Okay. Now, this overall width is, we're going to say this is um, eight and a half. So because the length is different than the width, um, actually, let's see, that's eight and a half. Um, our width at the smallest point is only eight inches so it's going to be a little bit off but that's okay so I am just going to I'm going to basically square up this edge using the um, tan line of the weaving that looks good there so I want to cut off um, all of an edge uh, because we want that nice squared edge that we got on the other ends. So we'll see how that does. Yeah. So there we have our first hot pad and uh, we'll go ahead and cut the rest of them. All right. There we have our eight. Felted hot pads. 
with my hand spun yarn. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, tell all your friends, and thanks for watching. Happy weaving!